Applause for John Petroselli, please. So, this may seem like much, but I'm going to use the mic, as is John. We are recording all this for later on. Sounds good. Uh, so, Yo, go get them, man. I'm not doing this alone. <laughs> all right, I need backup. I need eight more people behind me. <laughs> To accomplish this, apparently. So <laughs> while we're uh, waiting for people to come out, if you could just start off, sure. John, as far as uh, how do we end up here? Uh, Approach that however you like. <laughs> with with, with a, f a, f a failure to to apply to New Hazlet with this project two years ago. <laughs> this, I think kind of where this starts uh, because I missed the deadline. Um, that's that's really where the well that's that's a little tongue in cheek actually um, the project actually begins the day after the way uh, which is my my first project my debut album which has a uh, Gustin and Peter on it um, and also the inimitable Victor Lewis on drums uh, who was our featured guest uh, we had Mr Victor Gould on the piano and uh, Mr Claffy Mr Alexander Claffy on the bass. Uh, and it was a group that we had been working in New York um, for several years. And throughout that time, uh, I knew that I, I wanted to do a, a project with strings with that quintet. Um, that was the plan. And um, awesome. Thank you. Um, thanks, thanks for coming back out. OK, so uh, what happened, though, is uh, that we all ended up separating almost immediately after that recording. Um, I ended up, I was here in Pittsburgh. Uh, Gustin had moved to Philly at that point. Um, Peter must have really needed a break because he moved to LA. <laughs> he had to get away for a while. And, um, and so uh, when I came to Pittsburgh, I, I you know, naturally started up uh, in, a, in a bunch of other projects. Uh, which gave me an opportunity to, to get into some really unique avenues. Uh, I've been working in particular with uh, Gene Stovall, who's an amazing R&B and uh, rap artist. Uh, I've been working with Beauty Slap, uh, which is an incredible electronic music slash classical collaboration. Uh, and I've been working with Space Exchange with uh, Paul Thompson and Dave Throckmorton and Ben Opie, uh, among many others. And uh, al along the way, I met uh, Brett Williams as well. And so, um, you know, this project sort of blends together uh, a variety of influences for me. Um, some of the, the electronica and, and classical influences that I've, I think I've gotten deeper into here in Pittsburgh. Um, of course, studying with uh, Amy Williams. Um, but I think most importantly, uh, the most important influence uh, that stems from this this suite is my uh, is my friendship and my my collaboration uh, with Professor Jerry Allen, the late Professor Allen, uh, who unfortunately passed away uh, this summer. Um, several of these compositions were were written uh, in collaboration with her, and uh, I was honored to have the opportunity to, to play with her at the Village Vanguard uh, before she, she passed away. And um, in fact, Bridge Not an End, uh, Sly, um, several others, um, you know, I had the honor of, of hearing her uh, voice some of those, those compositions uh, in the early stages of their development. Um, so, uh, and, and as I mentioned, there's, you know, this has been an evolving process, you know, the, the Mercury Crossing, you know, uh, these compositions have been kind of stewing for a long time. Um, but I feel like I've been talking for a long time. So I'm going to, I'm going to answer, I'll, I'll let you ask the next question. <clears throat> so, so this is where I open it up to as far as we're looking for, I mean, feedback, questions. This is, it's an open forum. Um, and if you're still processing, we can pass the mic down. It's also interesting to hear from the other musicians as far as how they got involved in their relationship with this project. But if I see a hand, I'll hand you the mic. There we go. I thought the performance tonight was not only really entertaining, but also soul-soothing. 
And in these troubled times, we all need a little bit of that. So thank you. I think I can thank you for the whole audience. <clears throat> I have one question, though. It, it was obvious that you had such preparation and rehearsal, and it was very well prepared. Uh, but there was a couple times in there when you appeared to wave off the um, strings. And also, there was one time when you appeared to bring them to a, 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 you know, a readiness that they might not have been prepared for. Was that spontaneous? Uh, and if so, how does that process work? <laughs> Should I answer that? Mil <laughs> <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe Melissa should answer. Here, I just want to say two words. Uh -oh. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> in terms of preparation, <laughs> um, uh, when did we start rehearsing this? It was in September, yes? Yes. I'm not sure that in September, uh, they f we fully understood the implications of how complex, how demanding mentally and technically this music was. Um, it's, it's a process um, because the initial rehearsals were just myself and the string quartet. Every time you add another person you know, in, in, into a project, uh, I like to think that the uh, the demands are exponential, not sequential. So uh, you know, every time you add another person, you're talking about just even just logistical things like scheduling rehearsals, you know, printing parts, taping parts, um, showing up to rehearsal on time. Uh, there's just so many factors at play. Um, so we had some of the initial rehearsals in t September. Um, we, I, I would say that we had the, the mainstay of the suite uh, in everyone's hands um, by you know, mid-October, November. And uh, one of the, the interesting things about the preparation to me this time is because of the rhythmic demands of, of the suite, uh, we, uh, I, for the first time, I was sending audio recordings of, of this, the of the playback of you know in the in the composition software that I was working in, uh, because practicing even with a metronome uh, to me isn't sufficient to rehearse and to prepare this music. Um, beyond that, uh, in the performance context, uh, it actually kind of goes back to you know to answer your question, it goes back to something I, I said to the band just before we walked on stage. I said, um, "We've prepared this music, and now it's time to let it go," uh, and there's definitely an element of trust here um, that uh, they have all placed in me to be able to, to shepherd them through each of these compositions. Um, my job is not, uh, it's not enough for me to just play my parts well. It's not enough for me to, uh, to play every melody and to play every solo. I need to you know, be able to lead the band through this music as well. Um, and that means, you know, having a knowledge of every part of every section happening simultaneously as I'm playing. Um, so uh, certainly th that that brings a, a level of passion to my to my conducting. So yeah. <laughs> and could we maybe that would be uh, I, mean, I don't know there's many of you here on stage, but it would be really interesting to hear from each of you what it was like playing what we heard. Uh, when you first were brought on, looking at it, uh, and I realized, I mean, if you want to pass the mic and not answer that, that's fine, but All right. I think you'll be curious to hear. Um, so when I started playing this music, for uh, talking to John about the music, he sent it all to me, and then I, I realized I was going to need to maybe buy a new program to be able, some like different, uh, he talked about metronome programs, and, and there are some metronome programs that I was using that helped me to break down a lot of the rhythms just because um, as a drummer, I try to think about how, what kind of grooves I can pull from so that I can, you know, what would fit into something. Now with this music, um, it doesn't really fit into any genre that I've ever played before. So it's kind of pulling from a lot of things and then trying to figure out what's in context with what's everyone playing. Um, 
And then I was also with that, working with John, trying to figure out what I wanted to look at or what I would need to look at to be able to make the most musical choices in the moment. So there's a lot of times, like some of the music I have taped together, it'll be like a page of the bass part, two pages of string charts, a guitar part, and then maybe like a drum part as like a, to make sure I'm not gonna miss anything that John wants me to do. Um, but as far as textures and sounds, uh, the thing I was trying to think about was, you know, with all of the different, you know, grooves and things like that, I felt that I had a chance to experiment with, with sounds that might not usually be used in grooves because there's such different grooves uh, and different patterns and things like that that I haven't dealt with before. So, um, yeah, that's kind of how I broke it down for myself and try to work towards, you know, making it happen with the group. But the big thing for me, too, was depending on everybody in the band, uh, specifically Paul, uh, the bass player, just about where he was putting his beat and how he was phrasing his time. Uh, thankfully, in this situation, it was really easy to fit in, so uh, it was a good time. But um, yeah, that's kind of how I broke it down. For me, it was um, very difficult, and I <clears throat> spent a lot of time on it. When I first got the music, um, I didn't really, I don't know, it was, it was, I just looked at it and I just thought, like, okay, this, this might not be possible. So, so I, um, I practiced it for a bit. I practiced it with what John sent us, uh, the recordings. But it just didn't feel smooth, so I actually sought out some help. Um, I'm still in school, so I went out and um, sought out a, a teacher, and I asked him to help me out. And uh, the teacher is uh, Steve Lehman. Um, And he really helped me out a lot on that, and just to help me. <laughs> and I, I, that's how I broke it down. <laughs> um, unlike my peers here, uh, I shamefully uh, got the music probably in early November, and I looked at it uh, because I do so many other gigs. Uh, I didn't really sit down with it like I should. I saw that there were odd meters, oh, I can play in 5-4, I can play in 7-8, this is fine, I'll be all right. And then my first rehearsal happened and I was totally in over my head. Uh, I realized it right at that rehearsal. So I proceeded, and this is unusual, I've been telling my wife about this, this is very difficult music. And I told her, before Thanksgiving, I said, I have to play this music every day. I have to play it every day if I'm gonna execute it. There's a lot of uh, switching of, of clave in the odd times, a lot of counting that's happening. So it's extremely challenging to play. Uh, at other times, there are times that feel natural when we're improvising, um, but there's a lot of counting involved. Um, the piano player and I are joking about how it floats between four and three, and it's very easy to just keep playing in three when it's in four, or vice versa. You kind of run off the tracks at times. so. I worked really hard on this music. It was very difficult, but um, I got a sense of where it was gonna be at, and then this whole week has been awesome because we've been able to really work with everybody and breathe life into it and feel. And I can take no credit for the amazing feel that Gustin puts into the music and the wonderful melodies that Peter plays and the chords that Brett is playing and the amazing string quartet that just adds so much to the music. But I was extremely humbled by this gig, just so you know that. So very appreciative, very humbled. First of all, I wanted to say what a relief to hear that you guys found this music difficult. <laughs> I think I would speak for everybody in this part of the chairs. And um, yeah, that was incredibly hard, but I feel very honored and privileged to play alongside you guys. I feel myself that I learned a lot during these sessions and you sound terrific and it was just wonderful. And yes, we did have to count a lot. Yeah, so uh, as a classical musician, this was my first foray into uh, performing this type of music. And so it was a very steep learning curve um, and not much time to put it all together because you can do the work, 
yourself at home but when you come together and like John was saying our first few rehearsals were just the strings but man when you add in drums bass piano all these other elements there's so much to listen to and even like the different parts of the music you have to hone in on one musician or one instrument sound that you're looking for for that structural support and so just and like this week you know being in this room putting in the sound system and all of these different elements coming together it was really really difficult um but really challenging in a good way and I have to say that my appreciation and understanding of jazz musicians has uh, skyrocketed. I think, <laughs> wow. I mean, I loved the music before anyway, but now that I know what's going on, holy cow. Um, so yeah, it was fun, but it was it was a lot of hard work. Okay, it's a lot of was already said. So yes, <laughs> it was very difficult, <laughs> and. <clears throat> But we need to say thank you, John, because um, he really gave us like a different approach and be able to sit in. Because I, before performance, I said to piano player, you know what, I like jazz. I would probably rather sit there and listen <laughs> than be here. Because it's, it's, a, lo it's a lot of stress, especially uh, I, need <laughs> I need to tell you a little secret. <laughs> So <laughs> I'm sorry, but <clears throat> I think it, 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 it would be good um, to know and why sometimes he need to show us because some of the pieces was written and kind of remodeled <laughs> during the last sec session, so which adds more pressure on it, but um, I'm really very thankful so I was be able to play this music. It wasn't smooth <laughs> but uh, i love it i enjoy it and um musician like jazz musician really incredible and and john as a composer i think he's great yeah i'm not thinking about everything else but <laughs> the composition <laughs> the composition is it's really something it's so much in it you you can feel it so hopefully yeah it will go far okay <laughs> um, I would like to say that I second uh, the the ideas of um, how we had to, as, as classical musicians, we really had to listen on a different level. So we're used to playing together in a string quartet and breathing and, and watching and listening to each other. Um, but when we added in the, the elements of the jazz ensemble, um, all of a sudden things started popping out that we had to listen to. and. Um, I, I guess my analogy would be it's, it was the, the experience throughout this week <laughs> was sort of like a magic eye poster where you, you start off and you have an impression of how it's going to be and you, and you know the music because you've been studying it and as you go through um, it, it just the image just kind of pops out um, throughout the process and I want to say that I think the concert was really, really successful, and that it, um, and everything really, really came together. Um, I also want to say that John, this was a huge endeavor, and there were so many different angles of this project that he had to take care of. And so, um, a big part of what he did, in addition to being such a phenomenal musician, was um, having to round the troops and organize everything and make sure everybody had what they needed, but also. Um, he had to communicate with the classical musicians in the way that, that we are used to and what made sense to us, and the jazz musicians in the way that they are used to and what made sense to them. And so he had such a big job trying to make sure that everybody felt comfortable, everybody felt okay, and we all knew what was going on going into the music and we all understood it. And I think he did a really, really great job, huge undertaking. So um, thank you very much for having us join you on this project and for taking the risk of putting these two different styles of musicians together to create this entire work so it was uh, quite an experience and a, and a wonderful one to be a part of so thank you um i mean everyone really said everything um yeah no definitely the the music was super super hard i, I was in the same boat as paul um where 
I was actually on the road for like two months before this. Like I just got in town like a week and a half or so ago. Um, so I got the music while I was overseas. And so I'm, you know, doing my jobs overseas and everything and kind of looking at the music and coming back, looking, you know, it's the same thing. I was like, okay, I can play in five, I can play in seven, all these things. And then, yeah, first rehearsal was like, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> um, but I tell you, it was like the more we play, it, it a way, like when you just looked at your own individual part, it was that same reaction that, that Pete had where I was like, man, is this even, is this possible? Um, and then when it all came together, all the all the pieces it all we just put a lot of life into it and john did a really good job of uh leading everybody and uh communicating very well and my score has all i have all types of scribblings and writings all over it to make it easy for me to understand um lots of crazy pencil marks and just telling me like okay don't mess this part up here uh <laughs> think of it like this way but it's so it takes a lot of trust i think on the on for everybody because there are a lot of because of all these meter changes and crazy time signature things and that don't feel normal beats tend to kind of stretch and move and um you got to just trust each other and 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 listen and it was a cool way to uh just everyone come together and and do that so yeah Thank you for going through all that. I'm um, looking for a hand. I feel like I want to come to Mr. Bernabo. What am I playing again? Say it again. I am. Yeah, I'm from. I'm originally from here, uh, but I moved to New York like a year and a half ago. So I'm just back in town for the holidays, for the rest of the month. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go one more here. Great job, everyone. Terrific, fantastic evening. What about the electronics, John? What was the story? Can you, can you tell us a little bit about what you were thinking about and uh, with that? <laughs> well, first of all, hey, Matthew. Great to see you. Thanks for coming, I really appreciate it. Um, the, okay, so. Right, there's a whole part of the project that we just haven't talked about yet. Right, it's it, it, it's 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 really interesting. So, I initially <clears throat> initially came to the idea of using electronics uh, during a, a a different but interrelated project, uh, which is a band uh, that I've started uh, alongside vocalist Anastasia Hagerman entitled Mischievous Minx. Uh, this is an R and B pop. Uh, R&B, pop, and jazz sort of blended bands that um, actually many of the people here have ha have recorded on. Actually, the album just dropped. Um, Gustin, uh, Paul, and Brett all re just recorded, and, and we released this album on Sunday. So it's been a busy week. Um, <laughs> and um, a part of that album has, uh, we incorporated um, the electronic artist here in Pittsburgh, Chalk Dinosaur, on those projects. And working on how the electronics were going to meld with the band really influenced my decision making in terms of wanting to have an electronic element uh, with this with this suite. Um, at initially, what uh, we were planning, and this still might happen, uh, you know, in post, but we were planning on blending uh, the electronic uh, meditations, if you will, into and out of the band's performance, uh, but. Considering the the endeavor uh, with our sound engineers, uh, Mr. Jay Dutt, uh, Miss Angela Bachman, and um, I don't know who's up there, right? Who else is up there? But we have a whole bevy of of recording engineers up there. Uh, we have multiple uh, videographers. Um, given all the complexity of the the sonic requirements of this suite, we decided to have them stand alone. Um, but it wasn't just a logistical concern, it was also um, a decision in terms of um, this 
uh, the, the, each one of these uh, movements is so long and so mentally demanding that uh, I thought it would be apropos, essentially, to have a way of like, and, and for the audience too, quite honestly, to have a way of uh, cleansing your palate, essentially, between movements, to prepare the stage for the next movement and to kind of just let everything breathe um, in a way. So in terms of how we decided to structure that, um, we decided to base it around element, uh, elemental uh, like forces. And uh, so we had fire, we had water, we had wind. Um, but we were, uh, Angela and I also were concerned about trying to like blend nature and the urban soundscape, if you will, together. Uh, trying to be more reflective almost of the, the, the soundscape we all kind of consider here in Pittsburgh. Um, there was some other meditations that didn't get played tonight. Um, you know, we had field recordings of uh, us on buses and you know all different kinds of different sounds and samples. Um, and uh, none of it really made sense and we were okay with that in terms of its connection to necessarily to the pieces. Uh, and then a few days ago, I kind of realized that uh, there was there was a link. Uh, there was a way to link this together, and that was the tabla. Um, I've been playing the tabla for uh, almost wow, almost eight years now, and um, I would say that in terms of my rhythmic conception, much of what I'm doing stems from my my lessons on tabla and my understanding of Indian classical music, of the beat patterns and the the rhythmic cycles of Indian classical music um, and combining that with, you know, my knowledge of jazz, uh, harmony and, you know, uh, along those lines. So uh, the tabla is actually voicing beat patterns from the suite throughout those meditations. Um, but the way I recorded it, it was more voicing them in response to the tracks that Angela and I had already created. So it was a very separated process. Um, and so I think the synthesis though is compelling. I, I, I heard one of them for the first time tonight. I, it, it's, it's, I feel like it served its purpose, which was, I mean, I feel like it kind of allowed us to recenter things. I mean, I don't know how everyone else felt, I like but, I, but, but as a way of recentering, of refocusing, before hitting the next composition. Uh, that was sort of the thought process. I want to keep going, but I feel like we've got a bright and early matinee tomorrow. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're doing um, this all again at 10, <laughs> right? Um, please, it's, I'm so happy everyone stuck around for the Q&A. Can we get another round of applause for John, the rest of the band, the performance tonight. Thank you so much. <laughs>